we know that adhesion is nothing but the male reproductive wall and its single individual unit is known as stamen stamen yesterday i have explained you in very detail how is the structure of typical stamen the stamen is also known as microsporophyll stamen lies microsporophyll as a pronunciation the development of anther development of anther and pollen sacs development of anther and pollen sacs in our textbook a very brief study is given and i will try my best to teach you as detail as possible about each and every concept so let us talk about the development of anther and pollen sacs now just as i said in majority of the angiospermic plant this anther is biloped and yesterday we have seen that each anther lobe contain two pollen sacs am i right each anther lobe contain two pollen sacs it means in such biloped anther there are presence of four pollen sacs now here we have to understand how the anther is developed during the maturity of flower let me explain you be attentive what happens let us see when this stamen is immature in such immature stamen listen in such immature stamen you know this is the stamen in such immature stamen or young stamen the anther is simply in the form of group of actively dividing cells that is meristematic cells surrounded by a layer of cells known as epidermis listen carefully when the anther or stamen is young when the anther or stamen is young or immature at that time this anther this anther see let me write here is the anther this anther is in the form of group or mass of actively dividing cells that is meristematic cells it according to some authors that mass of cells is parenchymatous but actually we know that the parenchyma it is an example of permanent plant tissue which has lost the ability of division and differentiation so i think it is better to say that the anther it consists of group or mass of meristematic cells meristematic cells i hope you do remember in 11th we have seen that meristematic tissue is also called as the divisible tissue marathi madhyam vibhaji uti arthat meristematic cells meristematic tissue cha peshinna vibhajan hone chi kshamata aste tanna apan dividing cells asa mhanto ma asha meristematic cells sa ek group samuh mass ani tyacha bhuti epidermis mhanje ek vishishth peshin cha thar ha evdas fakt yang किंवा इमॅच्युअर एंथर मध्ये आपल्याला दिसत असतो नाउ हियर फॉर आवर प्रॉपर अंडरस्टँडिंग आय एम गोइंग टू ड्रॉ हियर फ्यू डायग्राम्स अँड विथ द हेल्प ऑफ दॅट डायग्राम्स आय विल ट्राय टू एक्सप्लेन यू हाऊ इज द मेकॅनिझम ऑफ डेव्हलपमेंट ऑफ एंथर ऑर ओलन सॅक्स और हाऊ इज द मेकॅनिझम ऑफ कन्व्हर्शन ऑफ यंग इमॅच्युअर एंथर इन टू द मॅच्युअर एंथर याचा अर्थ हा जो यंग इमॅच्युअर एंथर आहे त्याचं रूपांतर मॅच्युअर एंथर मध्ये कसं होतं हे मी या ठिकाणी डायग्रामेटिकली एक्सप्लेन करण्याचा प्रयत्न करतोय आता मी तीन वेळा बोललो द यंग एंथर इमॅच्युअर एंथर सिंपली कन्सिस्ट ऑफ ग्रुप और मास ऑफ मेरिस्टेमॅटिक सेल्स ऍक्टिव्हली डिवायडिंग मेरिस्टेमॅटिक सेल्स सराउंडेड बाय एपिडर्मिस नाव फॉर अवर अंडरस्टँडिंग हिअर let us take the ts of this anther ya thikane apan tacha transfer section yu samjun gyu now in ts it appears somewhat like this 
Now look, suppose with the help of white chalk, I am going to show the cells of meristematic tissue. Cells of meristematic tissue. Just consider, these are supposed to be the cells of meristematic tissue. And as I said, this group of meristematic tissue, this group of meristematic tissue is surrounded, is surrounded by epidermis, by epidermis. Here I am going to show the epidermis. Just look, here is supposed to be the epidermis. This is supposed to be the TS, transverse section of young or immature anther. Ya dikani, ya young kiwa immature anther swami ha TS da khulai. Aplea lakshat alasil, with the help of white chalk, I have shown the group or mass of meristematic cells and it is surrounded by the epidermis. Here is a single layer single layer of compactly arranged cells, parenchymatous cells known as the epidermis. Let me write here, here is the epidermis. Now what happens? Initially, initially few of the hypodermal cells present at the corner of anther, few of the hypodermal cells few of the hypodermal cells present at the corners of anther lobes look here is the ts of young anther so here these two structures represent the right and left lobe of anther okay and these are supposed to be the corners of this uh, this anther okay now i said that few of the hypodermal cells hypodermal means what the cells present below epidermis ha jo bahir cha layer ahe jala apan epidermis matla tacha khali aslelya peshin na apan manuya hypodermal you know hypo stands for the below and here derma stands for the epidermis ma ya epidermis cha lages khali asnarya kahi meristematic cells kutlya at the corners, या ठीकानी corners ला असले लिया, जन्ना archesporial cells मनता, that hypodermal cells are called as the archesporial cells, let me write here, suppose these are the archesporial cells, archesporial cells, so few of the hypodermal cells that is archesporial cells present at the corners of anther lobes undergo division to form two distinct layer of cells to form two distinct layer of cells listen carefully let me show in this diagram thodi shi diagram me enlarge karto apne la kalavo manu suppose here is the epidermis high epidermis mande ek lobe me rakhlela here i have shown a single lobe here is supposed to be the epidermis look these are the epidermal cells now just look here these are the archesporial cells archesporial cells i say these archesporial cells divide to form two distinct layers of cells ya patients archesporial cells vibhajan hote ani tya thikani patient che don thar taiyar hota there are formation of two distinct layers of cells such as such as the peripheral layer of cells let me use the another color suppose this is the peripheral layer of cells peripheral layer of cells peripheral yach artha kade cha jo peshin cha thar taiyar hoto arthat epidermis cha lages khali 
त्याला आपण असं म्हणूया की सब एपिडर्मल पेरिफेरल और सब एपिडर्मल सब एपिडर्मल म्हणजे एपिडर्मिसच्या लगेच खाली असलेला सो दिस पेरिफेरल और सब एपिडर्मल लेयर ऑफ सेल्स इज नोन इज नोन एज प्राइमरी पराइटल लेयर प्राइमरी पराइटल लेयर प्राइमरी पराइटल लेयर हियर आल्सो प्राइमरी पराइटल लेयर एंड द इनर लेयर एंड द इनर लेयर लेट मी यूज अनदर चॉक अनदर कलर दिस इनर लेयर व्हाट हियर आई एम गोइंग टू शो विद द हेल्प ऑफ ब्लू कलर दिस इनर लेयर इज नोन एज प्राइमरी स्पोरोजिनस लेयर primary sporogenous layer understand i am going to repeat once again i said that initially few of the hypodermal cells that is the cells lie just below epidermis also known as the archesporial cells present at the corners of anther undergo division to form two distinct layers of cells such as peripheral or sub epidermal layer of cells is known as primary parietal layer and the inner layer of cells is known as primary sporogenous layer during further development during further development this primary parietal layer the cells of primary parietal layer divide redivide divide redivide and they form different layers of cells one above the other arthat purchi vaad hot astanna development hot astanna ya primary parietal layer cha ja cells ahet tancha pasun patient che anek thar taiyar hota and they get arranged concentrically they get arranged concentrically let me show with the help of diagram suppose suppose look here you know that this peripheral layer outermost layer is nothing but the epidermis which is already existed and now this parietal primary parietal layer cells of primary parietal layer divide redivide and form many layers of cells many concentric layers of cells such as such as say endothecium let me show endothecium endothecium so here with the help of yellow chalk whatever layer of cells i am going to show this layer is known as endothecium it is known as endothecium let me label here endothecium just inside it one to three layers of cells are formed one to three layers of cells are formed one to three layers of cells are formed so i was telling you this layer endothecium inside it one to three layers of cells are formed known as known as middle layers middle layers these are called middle layers inside middle layer again again another layer of cells another layer of cells is formed another layer of cells is formed it is called as tapetum what here i have shown with the help of this brick red color tapetum and what is the name of this outermost layer which is already existed you know this outermost layer of cells which is already existed is nothing but the epidermis isn't it epidermis it means i think you might have understood the cells of primary parietal layer cells of primary parietal layer divide redivide and they form divide redivide and form here many concentrically arranged layers such as 
endothesium, middle layers and tapetum. Now, what about this primary sporogenous layer? The cells of this primary sporogenous layer, the cells of this primary sporogenous layer, they divide actively and form and form here. Let me show. Form here a mass of cells. Form here a mass of cells. These cells, these cells are called. These cells are called as microspore mother cells. These cells are called microspore mother cells or may be called as the microsporocytes. Microsporocytes or we can say pollen mother cells pollen mother cells. These microspore mother cell or microsporocytes or pollen mother cells, all these are diploid cells. All these are diploid. You know diploid means having two sets of chromosome. Okay. Now here, please look at the diagram. This single structure represent one pollen sac. This single structure represent one pollen sac. Means here, the pollen sac is surrounded, pollen sac is surrounded by four layers from periphery to inner, from periphery to inner such as epidermis, endothesium, middle layers, tapetum and it encloses a mass of cells known as microspore mother cells, microsporocytes or pollen mother cells. All these are deployed in nature. It means now the mature anther shows presence of two pollen sacs. Mature anther shows two pollen sacs in one lobe. So here we can say in left lobe two pollen sacs. Understand here is one pollen sac, here is another pollen sac. Here I have shown only one lobe and in another lobe also same structure is seen that is two pollen sacs. In this manner, in this manner, it occurs the development of anther or pollen sacs. Now, here I have explained you about the development of anther and pollen sacs. Here we have studied about the, we can say the development of mature anther containing pollen sacs and you know here pollen sacs contain the microsporocytes or pollen mother cells. Krupaya Lakshadya, ya thikani microspore mother cells, last upon pollen mother cells manto, nava varun apliya lo lakshat ala se, ya microspore mother cells kiwa pollen mother cells jahe, tya pudhe ata microspores mandes pollen grains la janma dena rahe. Aani, ya microspore mother cells kuthe present hai, to pollen sac madhe present hai. Aani manun, pollen sacs la microsporangia manta plural form pollen sacs are called microsporangia microsporangia listen the stamen is called microsporophy we know that the stamen consists of uh, stamen shows presence of bilobed anther and in such bilobed anther, there are presence of how many pollen sacs? Four pollen sacs. The pollen sacs are called as the microsporangia, singular microsporangium. Each microsporangium contains many microspore mother cells. Each microsporangium, that is each pollen sac, contains microspore mother cells. And these diploid microspore mother cells or diploid pollen mother cell undergo meiosis to form haploid pollen grains or haploid microspores. That process is also called microsporogenesis. That also I am going to talk once again after some time. So here we have understood how is the development of anther and pollen sacs.
pollen grain or microspore so dear friends just now we have studied the pollen grains or microspores are produced within the pollen sac of anther by the meiosis of diploid pollen mother cells or diploid microspore mother cells now here we people have to study initially about the pollen grain shape size structure of pollen grain and it is followed by the germination of pollen grain and formation of male gametophyte let me tell you the branch of botany which deals with the study of shape size and structure of pollen grains is known as palynology palynology here palynos this word stands for pollen grains and logos stands for the study it means palynology is the study of shape size and structure of pollen grains or microspores first of all let me define what is pollen grain you know that the pollen grain or microspores are defined as these are unicellular pollen grains are unicellular uni nucleated and haploid haploid asexual reproductive bodies asexual reproductive bodies here i have written the definition of pollen grain pollen grain is defined as it is unicellular uni nucleated and haploid asexual reproductive body unicellular in the sense it is single cell structure it is uni nucleated in the sense it enclose single nucleus and it is haploid means it has only single set of chromosome just two minutes before i told you that the pollen grains are formed by the meiosis of diploid pollen mother cells so obviously the pollen grains are haploid in nature i think you people have studied about the alternation of generations in plants in our 11th class we have seen in plants the life cycle shows two distinct phases the life cycle of plants shows two distinct phases such as sporophytic phase and gametophytic phase or sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation which appear alternately and successively in the life cycle of plant yatta 11 ve madhe apan shiklo hai ki plants cha life cycle madhe don pramukh avastha asta ek sporophyte kiwa sporophytic generation ani dusri gametophyte kiwa gametophytic generation ani ya doni phases alternately plants cha life cycle madhe appear hot asta त्या फिनॉमिनॉनला आपण अल्टरनेशन ऑफ जनरेशन्स असं म्हणतो नाव वी नो दॅट स्पोरोफाईट और स्पोरोफाईटिक जनरेशन इज डिप्लॉईड इट इज असेक्शुअल फेज अँड गॅमेटोफाईट और गॅमेटोफाईटिक जनरेशन इज हॅप्लॉईड अँड सेक्शुअल जनरेशन और सेक्शुअल फेज नाव द डिप्लॉईड स्पोरोफाईटिक फेज इज डिप्लॉईड अँड when it occurs the actual formation of haploid microspore or haploid pollen grain it is the end of sporophytic phase it is the end of sporophytic generation and beginning of haploid sexual gametophytic generation means we can say that the pollen grain haploid pollen grain or haploid microspore represents the first cell of gametophytic generation haploid pollen grain kiwa haploid microspore ha gametophyte chi pehli phase he represent karat asto first phase represent karat asto now first of all let us talk about the 
shape of pollen grains. Mostly the pollen grains are globose that is globular in shape that is rounded in shape but there is a great variation seen about the shape of pollen grains in different plants in different flowers. The pollen grains may appear oval, polyhedral, spindle etc. Then about the size. Pollen grains are microscopic. These are very small. On an average, the size of pollen grain is about 0.025 to 0.125 millimeter. 0.025 to 0.125 millimeter. And now let us talk about the actual structure of pollen grain. Structure of pollen grain. The pollen grain is double walled structure. Pollen grain is double walled structure. Double walled. It means it has two coverings. It has two walls. Double walled structure. Outer wall is known as exine and inner wall is known as intine. Outer wall is known as exine and inner wall is known as intine. Intine. Inner wall is known as intine. The exine that is outer wall. Let me show in the diagram. The outer wall exine it is quite thick. Outer wall that is exine is quite thick, tough and protective in nature. Here I am going to show here I am going to show the exine. This exine is composed of toughest biological material. It is composed of toughest organic material namely sporopollenin. Sporopollenin. We people have to remember this term sporopollenin. Exine. It is, it is composed of toughest organic, toughest biological material that is sporopollenin. Because this sporopollenin prevents the oxidation, leaching or decomposition of pollen grain and that's why the pollen grains can survive for a long duration. Basically, if we consider and observe the ultrastructure of exine, it reveals that the exine is further divided into two sublayers. जर आपण एक्झाइनचा आणखी अल्ट्रास्ट्रक्चर अभ्यासलं तर असं लक्षात येतं की एक्झाइनचे परत दोन सबलेयर्स असतात सच ॲज आउटर सेक्झिन इनर नेक्झिन आउटर सेक्झिन इनर नेक्झिन अँड दॅट सेक्झिन अँड नेक्झिन सेक्झिन अँड नेक्झिन कॅन बी रिझॉल्व इनटू फर्दर टू सबलेयर्स दॅट इज अबाउट द अल्ट्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एक्झाइन but here basically we have to remember that exine it is outer thick tough protective covering of pollen grain and it is composed of toughest biological material that is sporopollenin this exine may be smooth may be spiny may be rough may be sticky that depends upon the type of flower if the flowers are anemophilous it means if in flowers pollination is carried out by means of wind then the pollen grains the exine of pollen grains is smooth and if the flowers are entomophilous that is insect pollinating or ornithophilous that is bird pollinating then the exine exine it appears quite spiny or we can say rough so that it can stuck very easily to the body of insects and birds necessary for pollination now this exine is absent or very thin at some region exine is absent or 
very thin at some region. It is better to say this enzyme shows absence of sporopollenin at certain region and at such as at such regions where the sporopollenin is absent a small openings are present or that thin areas where sporopollenin is absent that thin areas are known are known as germ pores germ pores or germ furrows or germ aper apertures germ pores germ furrows or germ apertures for your additional knowledge let me tell you in monocot plants in monocot plants the pollen grain exine of pollen grain shows only one germ pore and such pollen grain is called monoculpate pollen grain mono stands for one and in dicot plants in dicot plants the exine shows three germ pores and such such pollen grain in which the exine shows three germ pores are known as triculpate triculpate pollen grains tri stands for presence of three germ pores now come to the intime intime it is inner thin and smooth wall it is inner thin it is quite delicate and thin wall and it is composed of pectocellulose this is in time first of all let me write and it is made up of pectocellulose pectocellulose the in time it encloses a single haploid nucleus it encloses single haploid nucleus and this nucleus is surrounded by cytoplasm it is surrounded by thick viscous cytoplasm this cytoplasm show presence of starch granule may be little fat droplets as a reserve food material that's all about the structure of pollen grain so basically while studying the structure of pollen grain we have to remember few important aspects such as the pollen grain is double wall structure outer wall exine inner wall intine exine is thick tough protective in nature while intine is thin and delicate it encloses a single haploid nucleus surrounded by cytoplasm this is the structure of pollen grain now we have to study the germination of pollen grain and development of male gametophyte या ठिकाणी आपण पोलन ग्रेन चे स्ट्रक्चर कसं हे समजून घेतलं आता या पोलन ग्रेन ची डेव्हलपमेंट होऊन त्याचं जर्मिनेशन होऊन त्याचं रूपांतर मेल गॅमेटोफाइट मध्ये कसं होतं हे आपल्याला या ठिकाणी समजून घ्यायचं आहे सो नाव लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट द जर्मिनेशन ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन अँड फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेल गॅमेटोफाइट germination of pollen grain and formation of male gametophyte the germination of pollen grain and formation of male gametophyte occurs in two steps such as pre pollination germination and post pollination germination pre pollination germination it means the development before pollination and post pollination germination means development after pollination okay so first of all let us talk about pre pollination germination it means the changes or development of pollen grain before pollination 
within the pollen sacs of anther. Just now we have studied that the pollen grains are double walled structures. Here is supposed to be the exine, here is intine and haploid nucleus surrounded by cytoplasm. Initially, initially the haploid nucleus of pollen grain divides mitotically. Initially, haploid nucleus of pollen grain divides mitotically. It means it occurs only the karyokinesis that is division of nucleus, division of nucleus and before to that, before karyokinesis you must know this nucleus is somewhat centrally placed in the pollen grain but just before karyokinesis in the cytoplasm of pollen grain a large vacuole develops a large vacuole develops and this vacuole displaces the pollen grain towards the periphery it displaces the nucleus towards the periphery now the nucleus it divides mitotically ultimately there are formation of two haploid nuclei there are formation of two haploid nuclei karyokinesis is followed by cytokinesis it means in between that two haploid daughter nuclei cell wall formation takes place mostly the cell wall formation occurs slightly obliquely obliquely there is a formation of oblique cell wall and hence it leads to the formation of two haploid daughter cells but unequal in size unequal in size one is very small and another is very large the smaller cell smaller cell is known as generative cell smaller cell is known as generative cell of course it is haploid and larger cell is known as vegetative cell vegetative cell or it may be called as a tube cell tube cell it means now before pollination the unicellular single cell pollen grain is now converted into two cell stage two cell stage at this two cell stage it occurs the dehiscence of anther wall breaking of anther wall anther wall breaks off and the pollen grains at this two cell stage are shedded out are liberated out and it occurs the pollination it means the pollen grains at two cell stage are carried by any biotic or abiotic agent up to the stigma of flower maybe same flower or another flower that we are known you must know in 70 percent of the angiospermic plants the pollination occurs at this two cell stage pollination occurs at this two cell stage listen जवळपास सेवन्टी पर्सेंट अँजिओस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स मध्ये ज्या वेळेला पराईवन घडून येतं पॉलिनेशन घडून येतं त्यावेळेला पोलन ग्रेन या टू सेड स्टेज मध्ये असतो बट इन थर्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ द अँजिओस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स द पॉलिनेशन ऑकर्स ऍट थ्री सेड स्टेज बट ऍज इन मोस्ट ऑफ द अँजिओस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स the pollination occurs at टू सेड स्टेज देअर फॉर हिअर वे हॅव शोन द टू सेड पोलन ग्रेन now these two cell pollen grain when get deposited on the stigma when get deposited on the stigma you know stigma it is the receptive point of carpel we all are very well known and when this two cell pollen grain get deposited on the stigma its further development takes place its further development takes place and the development taking place in that pollen grain after pollination after deposition on the stigma is known 
as post pollination germination post pollination germination post after अर्थात पॉलिनेशन झाल्यानंतर पॉलिनेशन झाल्यानंतर पोलन ग्रेन स्टिग्मावर डिपॉझिट झाल्यानंतर पुढचं जे काही जर्मिनेशन होणार आहे डेव्हलपमेंट होणार आहे त्याला म्हटलं जातं पोस्ट पॉलिनेशन जर्मिनेशन नाउ वी नो दॅट व्हेन पोलन ग्रेन्स गेट डिपॉझिटेड हियर ऑन द स्टिग्मा दॅट पोलन ग्रेन्स आर ऍट टू सेल स्टेज ऍट टू सेल स्टेज हियर वी हॅव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड ओके now the pollen grain it imbibes it absorbs the stigmatic secretion stigmatic secretion means it is sticky secretion sugary secretion secreted by stigma this pollen grain imbibes absorbs that stigmatic secretion and because of which the inner cell that is we can say this large cell vegetative cell it enlarges in its size it swells in its size and thus and thus the wall of wall of this large cell that is vegetative cell it protrudes out it comes out through the germ furrow germ pore in the form of tube you understand i said that the pollen grain it imbibes it absorbs the stigmatic secretion due to which the vegetative cell or tube cell it swells it enlarges in its size and the wall of that is the intine we can say of this vegetative cell protrudes out comes out through the germ pore of exine in the form of tube like structure this tube is known as pollen tube or may be called as a germ tube pollen tube or germ tube this germ tube it passes between the cells of stigma cells of style it means it pierces the stigma and style and grows towards the ovary the pollen tube it grows towards the ovary simultaneously the nucleus of vegetative cell nucleus of tube cell look here the nucleus of tube cell i will say as a tube nucleus as it is the nucleus of tube cell so it is tube nucleus this tube nucleus occupies the position at the distal end of pollen tube it occupies the position near the distal end of pollen tube means it flows into the pollen tube and it occupies the distal position it occupies the distal position it is followed by this second cell that is generative cell it means the generative cell please look the generative cell it also follows that tube nucleus it also enters into the pollen tube and as the pollen tube grows towards the ovary at that time at that time the generative cell generative cell the smaller cell look the generative cell it further divides mitotically generative cell it further divides mitotically ja vela hi pollen tube stigma ani style madun इकडे ओहरीकडे प्रवास करत असते त्यावेळेला त्या पोलन ट्यूबच्या टोकाला या ठिकाणी हा ट्यूब न्यूक्लियस आधी चाललेला आहे त्याच्या पाठोपाठ आता ही जी जनरेटिव्ह सेल आहे स्मॉलर सेल आहे ती पण पोलन ट्यूब मध्ये येते आणि त्याच वेळेला त्या जनरेटिव्ह सेलच मायटॉसिस या पद्धतीने सेल डिव्हिजन होत लिडिंग टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ टू हॅप्लॉइड सेल्स इट मीन्स the generative cell generative cell it divides mitotically to form two haploid cells and these two haploid cells nothing but the two haploid male gametes these are two haploid male gametes two haploid male gametes so now this pollen tube it carries the tube nucleus 
and two haploid male gamete towards the ovary and this structure form this structure form that is three cell structure okay this three cell structure containing single haploid tube nucleus and two haploid male gametes is male gametophyte is male gametophyte that is male gamete containing structure or male gamete producing structure in this manner by the germination of pollen grain by the development of pollen grain finally there is a formation of male gametophyte enclosing two haploid male gametes so here we have studied about the pollen grain structure of pollen grain and simultaneously the germination of pollen grain and formation of male gametophyte now we people have to study about the carpel about the ovule anatropous ovule types of ovule megasporogenesis and so on that all topics we shall study in our next lecture so let us stop here today and all of you take great care of yourself all the best thank you